Radon was actually found in our area in around 1987, 1988, when an individual who lived in Reading, Pennsylvania, went to the Limerick nuclear facility and set off the Geiger counters. They weren't quite sure why, but um, they actually visited his home in Reading and found out he had elevated levels of radon. This area became known as the Reading Prong, and it led from Reading to the, to the upper parts of New York. Now, if you think of where that area is, it's in the mountainous regions of Pennsylvania. So there's a simple principle that if you live in the valley, you have a lesser chance of having radon than if you live on a mountain. So what does elevated mean? So they, the national uh, government set a, a rate of 4.0 picocuries per liter. Now that's all scientific stuff to me, but bottom line is anything below four will pass. From 4.0 up does not pass. You don't know if you have radon unless you test. And we're going to do a road trip here in a few minutes, but um, where even in my own neighborhood, three houses down from me, they have a radon mitigation system. So I want to go through it with you today. Now, testing is easy, but the protocols have recently changed because now if we're going to test your house for radon, we have to do every structural level. So in other words, in my home, I have a basement and my family room is on a slab. So I would require two radon tests to make sure that in the lowest living level, uh, we're safe under four. And even on the slab that we're below four, if you live in a split level house, you may have a crawl space. So we have to test the level above the crawl space, basement, and slab. So your house may require three tests. Now, Pennsylvania changed their protocols about two years ago, but New Jersey just implemented their protocols this December. So they're trying to get a national um, consistency. Now, why is radon important? It's actually the second leading source of lung cancer after smoking. So if you're a smoker and have radon, you have a greater chance of having uh, lung cancer or getting it. Now, the government also says that even if we put a, a radon mitigation system in your home, it's always advisable to check it every two years. And weather factors are huge in this. So if you have a, a rainy forecast, what happens is the, the water from either snow and or rain can push radon gas into your house. But what is radon? Radon is a tasteless, odorless gas that works its way into your home via perimeter drains, sump pits, uh, foundation cracks, etc., and can work its way throughout the house. So, Jack, I have a house on a slab. Should I test? Absolutely. Because you don't know what your house is literally resting on. A number of years ago, one of my secretaries moved, and she had a house in Newtown, which, again, is in Bucks County. Her buyer asked for a radon test. We all kind of sat back and laughed, but she had an elevated chance uh, or elevated readings. So they had to put in what we call a sub-slab suction device or a radon mitigation system. Now, in the late 80s, they didn't know how to do this because there were no protocols. So typically, if your basement has a sump pump and pit, they put the pipe in the pit, then a radon fan, which we'll show you later, and then vented straight outside. Well, when you're straight outside, you could be by your patio, you could be by the pool, you could be by your barbecue grill, and you're pushing elevated radon levels of radon to your entertainment area. So finally, they changed the protocols where they said, well, let's put the fan outside and let's vent it above the roof line. That way, the gases exit. So that was the latest protocol. But in, again, in the early 80s or late 80s, early 90s, when the fan was on the inside of the house, they found that the radon fans themselves also leaked radon. So it took about 20 years for them to finally get the system right. Um, but also in the 80s, if your house had radon, because no one really understood it, uh, the real estate transactions were falling through. And we're just kind of sitting back and said, well, listen, it can be corrected. It's not a negative. It's a negative if we don't know about it, but it's a positive if we fix it. So it becomes not only a way to make your house safer, but they also found out that it dehumidifies the basement because it's taking the moisture out from under your concrete. 
So bottom line, before we go on our field trip, always test for red. Now, you can do, a, you can do a, a, a shop at home test where you go to one of the box stores and buy it. But if you're involved in a real estate transaction, then it has to be done by a professional. And the, client, and the vendors that we use are a test only company. So if you do test elevated, then we can provide you names of people that can get rid of it for you. But what's most important, especially with real estate, is that once the system is in, then it's up to the seller to retest to make sure that you're below this 4.0 Pico Curies per liter. I would say probably 50% of sellers forget to do this because their mind's not on that. Their mind is trying to move out and get their own houses situated. So it's really important to make sure that you get those follow-up readings. And again, if you have a system, uh, test it every two years. It's simple, it's easy, and let's go on that field trip. So next to me here is the radon mitigation system. As a home inspector, the first thing I do, believe it or not, is put my hand on it and make sure that the fan is running. Because uh, often than not, people don't know if the system is on or off. And the fans last about 10 years and about a $250 to a $300 replacement cost. So the pipe is leading from the basement out and then it extends all the way up above the roof line. So you can, you can get creative, you can use a downspout as an extension. I am feeling a little bit of air coming out of the system here. But, and I, then I run my hands around the gaskets just to make sure that nothing else is leaking. I don't know if you can hear this, but the fan is quiet. And it draws about 60 watts worth of power if we think of light bulbs. So it's not a heavy draw, but it's also a 24-7 system. Now I hate the term but it's not meant to be turned off because if it is, it allows those elevated radon uh, levels uh, to re-enter your home. Now, part of the protocols when we test a house is to make sure that the house is closed up 12 hours prior to the placement, and then the test is run for 48 hours. Now, we allow people to leave their home, of course, but to close the door behind them. The reason that we want the house to be closed up is because if you open up your windows, basically uh, you're creating um, a chimney effect. And what happens is it draws radon into the home. So we, want to, we always leave directions with the seller or the homeowner uh, to make sure that they follow the protocol so we get an accurate reading. So let me show you what goes on inside. Now inside a home, there's two things that we look for too. This, this gauge here is called a manometer. And basically, when we look at this, we want to make sure that there is a difference in the levels because that indicates vacuum or suction. So at the very top here is going to be a switch. And the reason for the switch is in case that fan ever needs to be replaced, we can kill the power to it. But at the same time, once I turn this switch off, if I look at this gauge again, you can see how it's reading back to zero. So again, if you have a radon mitigation system, check it. Take a look every once in a while and make sure that you're not reading zero because the fan has failed. This switch, I tell my clients to flip it a couple times a year just to make sure that we know that we are losing power to the fan and that the switch is doing its intended purpose. So as I mentioned earlier, radon fans last about 10 years. Um, it's one of these things that are kind of out of sight and out of mind, so we don't really give it a lot of thought, but there's been too many times during home inspections where we're placing the radon um, canisters and we find that the system has been off. Now, if that's the case, we still have to do the test, um, but it now requires two tests because now we have to put the system on, retest, and then go ahead and get those findings. So, again, every home should have a radon test. Now, if you live at the beach, don't worry about it because there's no radon in sand. Um, but, uh, again, simple parables. If you live on the mountain, you have a higher chance of having radon than if you live in the valley because your soils are different. I live near the Delaware River. We have a lot of silt. We have a lot of clay. Um, but, once again, it, it's all dependent on where your house is, sits in the earth 
and make sure you test for your family's safety and especially if you have a finished basement. So if you like this content, please press this, uh, the subscribe button below and we'll see you next time.